This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Seth Burrow tells us how her research on HIV immunology helps design better vaccines. Hello Seth. Good morning. Why is it proving so difficult to make an effective HIV vaccine? Well, we have very effective vaccines for a number of other infections, um, for example, polio or measles virus infections. But um, the way most of these vaccines work is actually by inducing an immune response, usually a neutralising antibody response, which will help to combat the infection if you subsequently encounter it later in life. Um, And unlike these other pathogens, HIV is actually highly resistant to control by the host immune response. Um, So the vast majority of people who develop a systemic infection with HIV um, won't clear that virus, so they'll go on to become persistently infected for life. And some people may contain the infection better and might take longer to develop the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS that's associated with HIV infection, but they won't eradicate the infection. And this is because HIV is very, very resistant to host defences, in particular to control by neutralising antibodies. And because of this, conventional approaches to HIV vaccine design um, won't work. Um, and so we need to have other, more novel approaches for HIV vaccines. In the search for a vaccine against HIV, what are the current lines of research? So um, there's a very active research effort going on in the HIV vaccine field, and this is not an area that my own group's involved with, um, aiming to try and understand um, how you could develop a neutralising antibody response against HIV. And that's going to be very difficult, but it's certainly a very worthwhile endeavour, because if you could induce a broadly neutralising antibody response, that could block the establishment of infection and provide a very effective protection against the infection. And a second line um, of research that's going on, and this is something that my group are involved with, um, is looking at the idea of inducing a T-cell response that would provide protection against HIV. So we know that CD8 T-cells are effector cells um, that can actually combat HIV replication quite effectively, and they act by lysing virus-producing cells and also producing soluble factors that will help to contain the infection. And in early HIV infection, they are very effective at helping to control virus replication and spread, um, but they don't actually manage to eliminate the infection altogether. So one of the things we're trying to understand is why is it that T-cells don't do a better job at controlling HIV? And there seem to be two main uh, mechanisms involved. Um, One is that the virus can very rapidly change so that the T-cells no longer are able to see it. And another is that the T-cells become less effective over time during infection. And then the other thing we're looking at is in people who naturally are controlling the virus somewhat more effectively, are there differences in their T-cell response to that in the people who don't control infection very well? And so hopefully by these two lines of approach, um, we can understand what would be the most optimally protective T-cell response and try and use um, that kind of T-cell response in a vaccine. And yet a third, more novel strategy for HIV vaccines would actually be to use innate immunity um, to combat HIV replication. Mm -hmm. And what is the contribution of our innate immune system in our fight against HIV? So that's actually one of the questions that we're trying to address. Um, So innate responses actually um, are the body's first line of defence against infection and they're activated very rapidly after we become exposed to a pathogen. And they have two important roles. Um, One is to activate um, T and B cell responses that are specific for the infection to combat um, pathogen replication. And the other thing is to try and limit the replication and spread of the pathogen in the interim while the T and B cell responses are being exposed expanded. So you can think of your innate immune system as almost like a fire alarm system in a building. Um, So if there's a fire, it will become activated. And one of the things it will do will be to call the fire brigade. Um, So like the T and B cells, that's the sort of professional arm to combat um, the fire or the infection. And at the same time, um, the fire alarm system might turn on some kind of sprinklers, um, which would help to control the spread of the fire until the fire brigade get there and might actually manage to put the fire out altogether.
So we're trying to understand in HIV infection um, what role innate responses actually play in directly combating virus infection. Um, and we do have some evidence that suggests that um, some parts of the innate immune system can actually play a very important role in controlling HIV replication. And we could potentially make use of that um, in vaccines and therapeutic strategies. But on the other hand, because innate responses are involved in activating the immune system and because HIV replicates within the immune system cells, um, innate responses can also have very detrimental effects promoting virus replication and spread through their general immune activating activities. So we will need to be very careful how we employ innate responses with any kind of vaccine or therapeutic strategy. And could your research lead to a vaccine against HIV? So the work that we're doing on T-cells has very obvious applications to HIV vaccine design. So um, vaccines are being developed at the moment to induce T-cell responses to HIV. And our research um, could enable these vaccines to be tailored in specific ways to induce an optimally protective T-cell response. <clears throat> there are various ways in which innate responses could be employed um, to combat HIV infection. So for example, if we define an innate factor which is involved in mediating protection against HIV, that could be incorporated into a microbicide to try and prevent acquisition of HIV infection. Um, or it could potentially be applied therapeutically to people who are already infected with HIV. I think what's more controversial at the moment is whether you could actually employ innate responses as an effect mechanism in the design of a vaccine. So the way that vaccines work is by inducing a memory immune response. So we know that T and B cells possess the characteristics of memory. So once they've encountered an infection once, they'll respond to it much more effectively and provide better protection the second time around. And classically, it's been thought that innate responses don't possess this characteristic of memory. But there have been some more recent studies which have suggest that maybe innate responses can exhibit memory. And that's something we're quite actively looking at at the moment. And if innate responses do exhibit some form of memory and could be used in a vaccine, that could have very broad implications, not just for vaccines for HIV, but for other infections too. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So there are many other groups within the department who are actively involved in producing and testing candidate vaccines for a wide range of other infections, um, for example malaria um, or tuberculosis. Um, and in fact, some of the groups are actually generating vaccines for HIV as well. Um, so any findings that we come up with from our research can be very rapidly translated into HIV vaccine design, um, not only potentially for HIV, but for some of the other infections as well. Thank you, Seth.